The war in Ukraine is approaching a climax. Both sides are preparing for a decisive battle, and the main battle of the year will be the battle for Crimea. With the help of Western allies, Ukraine is creating three new army corps that will be armed with Leopard and Abrams tanks, and a variety of other armored vehicles. The Ukrainian command is in no hurry for another offensive, and it's saving its best troops, wanting to prepare for a decisive battle. Last fall, it was decided to prepare a powerful armored fist with which to break through the Russian offensive line and inflict a major defeat. To this end, the Ukrainians are creating a new army in their rear. At least 150,000 men are preparing for a decisive battle. They will be armed exclusively with Western tanks, German Leopards, American Abrams, and British Challengers. Western countries are already actively supplying their tanks to Ukraine, and the Ukrainian soldiers are actively training. In total, more than 450 tanks will arrive in Ukraine. This should be enough to break through Russian positions and fundamentally change the situation on the battlefield. Who will prepare faster for this decisive battle and who has a better chance of winning? Let's talk about this in our new video. While Putin is preparing a multi-million dollar army, Ukraine has placed its bet on technical superiority. The tanks and medium range missiles that Western allies have been supplying to Ukraine should lead to victory. The Russians still hope to defeat Ukraine with numerical superiority. This technique worked well on the Eastern Front at Bakhmut. With great difficulty, losing hundreds of soldiers a day, the Russians are advancing meter by meter, foot by foot. Theoretically, Russia could put more than 5 million men in arms. Even without modern weapons, this multi-million dollar army would be an insurmountable problem for Ukraine. Putin is willing to sacrifice as many of his soldiers' lives as it takes to win. The Ukrainians, meanwhile, are already experiencing problems with manpower. Therefore, the only way out is to bet on Western military equipment. Interestingly, Ukraine has a clear counterattack plan, which is easy to understand just by looking at the map. None of the Ukrainian commanders are hiding it. Only the date of the operation and its details are unknown. Here is how this counteract will take place. First of all, the Ukrainian military will destroy all Russian ammunition depots and all military infrastructure within 150 kilometers of the front line. American GLSDB missiles launched from HIMARS will be able to help with this. The British also promised to supply long-range missiles to Ukraine. Probably these will be Scalp Storm Shadow air missiles with a range of more than 250 kilometers. These missiles can be launched from the Soviet MiG-29 aircraft, and Slovakia has promised to transfer these aircraft to Ukraine. In general, when you hear that the Ukrainian army has started actively striking in the Russian rear, it means that this is preparation for a decisive battle. Then the Ukrainian army, armed with German, American, and British tanks, will have to break through Russian defense fortifications in the south of the country and cut through the so-called Corridor to Crimea. In about a week, the Ukrainians should reach the shore of the Sea of Azov, encircling the cities of Melitopol and Berdyansk. The entire Russian defense in southern Ukraine rests on three points. First is the city of Melitopol, where the Russians have set up many warehouses and barracks for their military. Second is the supply of arms and ammunition from Crimea. Third, there are railroad deliveries through the Volnovakho railway junction. With the new missiles, the Ukrainians will be able to destroy all of this, just as they destroyed hundreds of targets with HIMARS missiles last year. Then, the Ukrainian infantry supported by tanks will have to break through to the shores of the Sea of Azov. Then Ukraine would again launch several devastating strikes on the Crimean bridge, putting it out of action. This could also be done with long-range missiles and kamikaze surface drones, Ukrainian-made. These drones could damage the supports of the bridge and the missiles could significantly destroy the railroad tracks. All of this would disrupt supplies from Russia to Crimea, and Crimea will find itself surrounded. The Russians will only be able to supply Crimea with ships, but then they risk losing all of their ships. Long-range missiles love to hit big ships. Let me remind you that the Ukrainians have already sunk the largest Russian cruiser, the Moskva, when it came too close to the coast. Without significant supplies, the entire Russian military grouping in Crimea and southern Ukraine will be strategically encircled. Under the onslaught of Ukrainian infantry, sooner or later they would surrender or be destroyed. German Leopard tanks will be the main armored force of the coming battles. Two types of these tanks will be supplied to Ukraine, Leopards 1A5 and Leopards 2A6. 
The Germans laid the four most important characteristics, crew protection, maneuverability, firepower, and fire control system at their core. In this war, tanks do not fight against tanks as in a duel. Therefore, there is no point in comparing the characteristics of Leopard tanks with Russian tanks. They are basically equal. The Leopards only have an advantage in their fire control system and in accuracy. Also, Leopards are more comfortable for the crew. Ukrainian tankers say, this tank is made for people. The main purpose of tanks in this war is to support infantry. Tanks must break through enemy fortifications and prepare the way for infantry. Tanks destroy enemy firing points, fortifications, machine guns, and mortar nests. Also, tanks destroy light armored vehicles and enemy infantry advancing in the field. Let me remind you that after a year of war, Ukraine has lost many of its tanks. Now there are barely enough for defensive operations. And to organize a successful counteroffensive, we need at least 500 additional tanks. Therefore, only Western allies can save Ukraine from disaster. Leopards are ideally suited for combat operations in Ukraine. When the Leopard 2A6 enters the battlefield, it instantly becomes the leader of the battle. The Leopard has a 120 mm extended cannon that is capable of firing different types of ammunition. With a velocity of 1740 meters per second, the projectile is capable of penetrating 810 millimeters of armor at a distance of two and a half kilometers. The fire control system and accuracy of fire is incomparable to the Russian ones. Therefore, they can easily conduct night fights with great accuracy against the enemy. The Russians are known to have very big problems with accuracy of fire, not only at night, but even in the daytime. The Leopard's engine is not fussy and does not need special fuel additives and can run on regular diesel. The Abrams tank, for example, needs aviation fuel for its turbine engine. Another advantage of Leopards is that they can be easily repaired during combat. Germany has established production of all kinds of spare parts, and Poland has a large repair base for these tanks. Theoretically, a broken tank could be back on the battlefield in a week. Meanwhile, in Russia, there are very serious problems with military equipment. Instead of supplying new Armada T-14 tanks to the front, they started supplying World War II tanks. Recently, they brought back some old T-34 tanks from Laos. They have been slightly upgraded and can certainly fire, but there are big doubts that these Stalin-era tanks will be useful on the battlefield. The Russian tank industry is still unable to produce more than 100 tanks a year. Therefore, it is more focused on repairing old and damaged vehicles. The Russians also have problems with shells for all types of artillery. The Russians use dozens of times more ammunition than the Ukrainians. In the hope of replenishing their supplies, the Russians are turning to North Korea, Iran, and other small dictatorial regimes to buy from them the very weapons they themselves once sold them. Ukraine has been allocated 300,000 pieces of 155mm ammunition from US depots in Israel. This is quite enough for Ukraine for its general offensive. In addition, Ukraine is being supplied with brand new 152mm shells that are manufactured specifically for Ukraine in the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Therefore, I can confidently bet on Ukraine in the upcoming battles, thanks to Western tanks and armored vehicles, as well as other types of high precision weapons, Ukraine has a better chance of winning. After all, only a Ukrainian victory can put an end to this insane war unleashed by Putin.